The Midlander garden is looking great. Everything is growing very fast and very healthy. Although I am getting tired of hand watering, so I've already started the automatic watering system. I decided to go ahead and use the existing piping from my sprinkler system and I'm going to use this to automate the watering of the Midlander garden. So what I did is I went ahead and cut into this pipe right here, put two 90s on it, and then I made this here where the 90s come together and this will come down and fit right on top of that. Okay, I have that all together. This is all 3 quarter inch 200. I'm not using Schedule 40 under, underground, but I am using Schedule 40 to come out of the ground. So this pipe here is going to go right here, and that's Schedule 40. In case it gets bumped, it's a lot sturdier. I put Teflon tape on here. I don't know that you need to. I like it because it makes things go in easier, smoother, with less effort, and reduces any chance of leaking. Now you notice I am using threaded connections here and here. When I come out of the ground, in case this happens to get broken, I want to be able to just unscrew this, just like a sprinkler head, and put in a new pipe. All the parts, everything I'm using, all the descriptions and links are below this video in the more information section. I also had marked from the inside corner here six inches to where I wanted this pipe to come up. The reason why it's six inches in, because I'm going to plant about two inches in here, and then I'm going to plant ten inches over here. And in between two inches and ten inches is six inches. That'll get even watering for both rows. If I plant two rows, or if I plant one row, it'll get even watering too. One tool that I'm very glad that I purchased is this pipe cutting tool. This makes pipe cutting very quick and easy. There's no burrs and it works great on the 200 and the Schedule 40 pipe. A couple clicks and your pipe's done, ready to go. Nice and clean connection. Well worth the money. I do want to show you, I did add some strapping here to secure this in case it does get kicked or moved. One thing I would caution you is if you are working by the sprinkler controller boxes, be careful of wiring. As you can see, there's a lot of wiring down here, and if you're digging with your shovel, you may run across that and cut a wire, and then you've got another problem. Also keep in mind that a controller valve has water coming in and water coming out. Make sure that you cut the right line. Inside on the controller, there's actually an arrow, uh, an arrow end and an arrow point showing which way the water is flowing. So you might check that to make sure you you're cutting into the right pipe. Now that we have all the trenching done, we've got all the pipes secured, I tested to make sure that nothing's leaking. Now we're ready to drill holes into the watering pipe that will go across these beds here and water down the length of the beds. It's now time to make the actual watering pipe that the water comes out to water the plants. You want to use 3 quarter inch, 200 psi tubing not schedule 40. You want to be able to make three holes every four inches apart. You're going to want one down the center and then one at 45 degrees from that and one at 45 degrees from that. To make that easy what we've done is we've taken a 2 by 4 we cut a hole one inch wide and one inch high or maybe a little bit higher than one inch so that it just fits over the pipe so there isn't a lot of slop here in it. Then what we did is we drilled a hole down the center and just put a regular pencil in to the top. Since I'm already using treated 2x4 lumber for the supports for the pipe in the garden, I'll show you that here in a minute, why not just slide this across the lumber? We tried that and it works really, really well. I simply pull this all the whole length of the pipe, then I come back here and I undo the pipe and I get it ready for the next marks. So what I've done, if you can see here, I've marked what I would call the 12 o'clock position. And if I can get this to stay still, it's not exactly straight. The, the, nine, the 3 o'clock position and the 9 o'clock position. Then I take half the distance in between, which would be a 45 degree angle, 
and then I just rotate this pipe so this is now up on the top clamp it down and make another line do the same for this clamp it down make another line and then I come by with my tape measure and mark starting two inches in every four inches and then I draw a line that connects those three lines every four inches and that's where I drill my holes. You want to use a number 57 drill bit. This is a, also called a wire gauge. It's very very small about half the size of a sixteenth inch. Do not use a sixteenth inch or anything else larger. Use a number 57. Check the link below this video for a place where you can buy this. Then just come through very carefully and drill a hole every place that those lines cross and then that will allow the water to come out to water your plants. One thing I do with this bit is I put this as far into the drill as I can in case it does snap, which this one has, I'm only using, losing a part of the drill bit, not the whole thing. You may want to get two or three or four of these depending on how many pipes you're drilling. Another option is instead of drilling it by hand, you could set up the pipe, put it down in here, use this handle, and then go down and drill very quickly and precisely without having to worry about any wiggle in the drill which might break the drill bit. But either way, whether it's freehand or with a drill press, drill all the, all the holes in the pipe. I'm done drilling the holes and I've assembled the pipes. Let me show you how I did that. On the end of the pipe that goes into the bowl valve, I took a threaded mail connector, glued that in, and just to make it easier for me, I put this little ridge on the top so that I know exactly on the other side where there's another ridge that lines up with the center hole. That way when I'm lining up the pipe I can just line this up here and that'll kind of give me an idea of where that lines up. This is a 20 foot bed. I could have just put an adapter on here and glued these two pieces in but this is a 20 foot length of pipe and if I need to store it somewhere that's a long pipe to have to store. Also, if I didn't get these perfectly lined up and I glued these in permanently, I'd have a problem. I have to cut it and it'd be a mess. Down here on the end, I simply cut the pipe when it came to the end of the row, put another one of these connectors on, put Teflon tape on it, and I have the end cap here. Now I'm ready to test the pipe by flushing it out. So I have the water turned on and the ball valve closed. I'm going to open the ball valve, let the water shoot out, kind of rinse everything out, then I'll put the end cap on and I'll be done with this. You can also see down here I have a six inch length of treated two by four and then in the center two and a half inches in I marked it and I put in six D two inch long galvanized nails. So this is treated wood and galvanized nails so this should last a long time. I'll go ahead and flush the system out once I've done that to all of the different pipes I'll have the end caps on, I'll turn everything on, and then I can adjust the pressure and the amount of water that comes out by turning the ball valve. Boy, I can't tell you how beautiful that sound is, the sound of irrigation automatically happening after going through the work of building the irrigation system. It's definitely worth the work. There are a lot of advantages of this irrigation system over others, and let me just point those out to you. First of all, each of these sections is individually controlled. This one is right by the control valve here in the ground and so the water pressure here is the greatest. So I only have this open up less than maybe a quarter of a, of a turn here and I'm getting all the water that this bed needs. Something else that you notice is that this is above the ground. That means it's not going to get clogged like other systems might that lay down in the ground. You won't have the rot and the mildew problems that you have with systems laying on the ground. Another thing is if this gets clogged, all you need to do is hit it with your hoe handle or something like that and unclog it just to jar it a little bit. Also very inexpensive, a 10 foot length is $1.13. Of course you have to buy the ball valve and other fittings, but well worth the time and the money. This is LDS Prepper reminding you, if you are prepared, you shall not fear. I truly hope this video has been helpful to you as you lay out and plan your automatic watering system and enjoy the benefits of doing so.